announcement before I begin my speech and hopefully before the timer begins. Um, Kate and I would like to extend a few thank yous. Um, firstly, to the University of North Texas um, for agreeing to host us and organise this whole thing. Um, thank you so much for going to the State Fair tomorrow. We're very excited. Um, we're less excited to try fried butter. Um, <laughs> um, we'd also like to send a big thank you um, to Dr. Brian Lane for being such a good host and organising this whole thing personally. Um, also, a massive thank you to all of you in the audience, and we realise some of you are here for extra credit. Um, hopefully there is like maybe one token member um, who was just interested, and hopefully we'll give you a good debate and that you will enjoy, or at least maybe you've got out of lectures or something. Um, also, a personal thank you from me. Um, thank you all for that rousing and not at all embarrassing uh, rendition of Happy Birthday. Um, hopefully you feel so welcome. Um, not at all. Um, okay, before I begin, well, Pat, let's begin now. So talking of closing borders, um, I think all four of us in the debate have learned that we need higher Facebook settings. Um, so Brian cannot find photos of us to use to mock us um, in such situations. And I also realise that for many of you as a Texan and American audience, you may be worried about an English person talking about borders. Don't worry, we do not want you back. <laughs> in fact, under this motion, we would probably shut you off altogether. Um, and that would be better for many reasons, but mainly health. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about how this motion is going to save lives and stop diseases spreading and solve the problem quicker and cleaner. Um, so first of all, a model, right, so to explain what's happening. It's a little bit boring, but very important. So we think the World Health Organization has the right to close land, sea and air borders when there's a threat of a global epidemic or pandemic. Obviously, they can judge what that is. I'm a literature student, not a medic. We think they know a thing or two about when diseases are harmful and need to be prevented. Obviously, you can have differential closures, right? So in terms of a pandemic, you would have total closure. In terms of an epidemic, you probably have quarantine zones before you left or entered the country. For example, when SARS was a threat, there were simply temperature screenings before people got onto planes to check whether they had that disease or not. It would adapt to whatever the situation was. If you want to leave the country, though, generally, you must go through a quarantine zone to check you don't have the disease. We'd have priority cases at first, so, you know, if you wanted to go away for a holiday, we'd probably be like, wait your turn. But if you were a dying parent you wanted to visit, we'd expedite the process as much as we could do. If you wanted to enter the country where there is a disease, we would make you sign a clause with the WHO, grenading your right to leave unless you test negative through the quarantine process. Obviously, we would encourage and allow aid workers to come in to treat the people. Similarly, we would allow the WHO to manage customs, to allow goods in. We would not want people to starve. We would have soldiers or aid workers patrolling borders. This isn't unusual. In fact, US soldiers are in Liberia now helping to fight Ebola and help police things like hospitals. Okay, so let's explain exactly why this helps save lives and stop diseases, right? We think this would effectively stop the spread of these diseases. Why? Because it would simply prevent them reaching new areas. You could not get on a plane to Dallas if you were coming from somewhere like Liberia without being tested for that disease to make sure it doesn't enter new zones where previously that disease has not been found. We think actually it's easier to treat the disease within those countries because you can coordinate and focus all of your treatments, right? All agencies have finite resources in the end. It is easier if you know exactly where all the sick people are so you can treat them and check and monitor all those people. We accept that more people within these countries may well die, right? Because you are being trapped in a country where there are people who are sick of this disease. But we think less people will die worldwide because it stops it spreading and it allows us to treat it in a much easier manner. We think while we're weighing up human lives, all human life is valuable, right? We don't think your life is more valuable when, um, if you belong to certain countries. But we think because human life is inherently valuable, we should protect it as much as we can. This is the best way to do it in this um, circumstance. The problem is at the moment in the status quo, the focus is often on big cities with airports, right? Because we don't want it to spread. This is quite difficult to do. There are often areas of panic where this is going on. Rural areas are often left unchecked. So typically the poor in countries are treated last and left to die. What changes under our model? Now you can control information better, right? Because it's much easier to monitor your population when they're the only people you're monitoring. Monitoring. You also think it's less chaotic because people aren't trying to flee because they can't. can't. Simply, you've not got chaos around borders. Moreover, you can go into rural areas and make sure those people are okay. We think this has been proven to work, right? Yugoslavia in 1972 had a smallpox epidemic. They closed their borders. They treated it. Europe wasn't hit with another smallpox attack. This has been proven to work. Now, why do we have to do this as a WHO? 
Because we think this is a threat to the whole world, right? We can't manage it with one country. And one country shouldn't be able to manage it on their own. Why? Because if it does leave that country, it is a threat to all of us as individuals. We need protecting just as much as their citizens protecting. This is why it's not a matter of national sovereignty. Liberia has closed their borders. They've done so far too late. Why? Firstly, because government is always inefficient. You have other priorities you're trying to manage than just the health of your citizens. This is not true for the WHO. Their only priority is the health of everyone in the world. Secondly, there's no guarantee that every country will do this. So if like one country within the one of Africa doesn't do this, that becomes problematic, right? Because you do have people slipping between borders, you do have the disease spreading. In, in contrast, the WHO has only one objective. They're used to coordinating international responses and they're very good at treating disease when they can contain where that disease is. We think they can get the aid workers in. Moreover, they're a neutral organisation. We think they're generally favoured by all. Why? Because people like being healthy. People like dying. We think the WHO has the power to do this, can manage this problem. And because we close borders, we stop people from getting ill. So for all these reasons, I urge you to propose. Thank you. Okay. 